Hi, and welcome to another tutorial about C Sharp and Visual Studio Express 2010. In this video tutorial, we will be talking about logical operators. Let's start up C Sharp. Let's say new project, console application. I'm going to make a new program. I'm going to call it program 5. OK. The first thing I want to add is the console.write line because when we fire the program, we do not want to close it automatically. Oh, not write line, read line. Sorry for that. <clears throat> okay. Now we can type all kinds of things before it. Okay, we're going to talk about logical operators. What is a logical operator? Now let's say that you have an if statement, and let's let's build that if statement for a second. I'm going to make an integer called my number. I'm going to give it the value of 5. I'm going to give it another value, another uh, integer, my number, my number 2, and that is the value of 8. Okay, now we're going to make an if statement, <coughs> and this if statement is going to say if my number is equal to 5, then it should do something. And we haven't discussed this yet, but inside an if statement, you can, in the code block that belongs with it, so this part, this part, we can add another if statement. So for instance, we could say this, and if my number 8 is equal to 8, and only then do console.writeLine and, for example, say something. Okay. So in this case, in our case, we're comparing number five, my number if it's equal to number 5, and then inside that code block we have another if statement and we're saying if my number 2 is equal to 8, then we can only then we can console write line for example. Now let's say this statement here is true and this one isn't, then nothing happens at all. Now instead of using a nested if, as this is called here, we can also use a logical operator. This works as follows. I'm just going to remove this for a second. Let's say I want to check on both things to be true. I'm going to use a double ampersand, which stands for AND, and then I can add the second if statement in one actually. So here we have the exact same uh, the exact same logic as we had before, but only this time we have it in a single if statement, and that's great because it saves a lot of room. It looks a lot clearer, and well, it just do doesn't need that much of doesn't need that much typing. Now of course in this tutorial we're going to talk about logical operators and as you can see we've already used one now. So I'm going to display what I'm going to show you what the other operators are. So first off we have the double ampersand which means and and we have t these guys. This is the or logical operator. And there are others. Um, I'm only going to show you the not, which is the exclamation mark. You also have uh, XOR, that's a real cool name, but we're not going to use that, so don't worry about that. For most of the programs that you will be writing, you will be using the AND, OR, and the NOT. Okay, let's test all of these. Now let's say I'm making a comparison with my number, and I'm going to say my number is 3. Now this statement here is not correct. So that means that the body of this if statement is not being executed. As you can see, we have a black screen. Nothing is happening. However, if we would replace the AND operators with OR... Oh, let's stop the program first. Now it says, if only one of these two comparisons, if one of them is true, then execute the code block that belongs with this if statement. 
and there we go, we have the sample text printed out. Now logical operators can be used in various ways in an if statement and you can use as many as you want. For instance we could bind these two together, the first two statements, and the outcome of that can also again we can be compared. For instance if we would if my number plus my number two if that would be higher than 10 which is in our case true then also execute it so if one of these values is true either one doesn't matter and this one has to per has to be per se true then execute this data and there we go again let's say these uh, let's say that this has to be lower than 10 and that's not going to work why because we have the one of these statements here is not true I'm going to show you one last time what the or does just to show you how you can create a little bit more complex if statements one of them has to be true and this one is still true so at least this one is actually true, but because here's an OR and here's also an OR, that's because that's why this console write line is being executed. Okay. I'm gonna remove this. I'm going to make a Boolean. I'm gonna say Boolean and I'm gonna call it locked. And now inside this if statement we're gonna check if locked is true. Now, I've already shown you that there are two ways to do that. We could say if locked is true, then execute this. You can see here sample. We can also use the abbreviation. Just check if it's locked. Okay, because that's the same thing as we typed before. But let's say we want to check if it's false. What do we do then? We could do this. We can check if it's false. It's perfectly fine, perfectly possible. But a, an abbreviation to this is typing if it's not locked. And there we go. The line is not executed. Now while using this uh, locked value, there's something interesting going on. Something that you can use very well in your code. Let's display what locked is by saying locked to string and then we're gonna display the value of locked on our screen and then we're gonna say locked is not locked now what does this mean it means that locked which currently has the value of true gets the exact opposite of locked which is false and this is really useful because this way you can really switch the true and false value now let's say we want to copy this line again and when we execute this we're gonna first we're going to have true and then we're going to have false and this concludes this lesson on C sharp inside Visual Studio Express 2010